Hi everybody, thank you for tuning in to the Ruthie World One Woman Show. Happy New Year. I know it's 10 days into the New Year, but still, Happy New Year. On um, New Year's Eve recently, I made a trip to New York City via the Chinatown go-to bus. And it's been a couple of years since I've been utilizing the Chinatown go-to bus which has been in existence since 1997. And it originally started out as a bus company to take, how should I say, Chinese Americans to or from their jobs. And at one point, they were the only ones that used the um, Chinatown go-to buses. But then they decided that, then it was decided that, you know, it could be a lucrative business. And so the, um, Chinatown go-to bus wars ensued and you can go google it on YouTube and see um, I mean google it To see what has happened regarding Chinatown go-to buses, but like I said the Chinatown go-to buses is it, They're good for Two reasons the number one reason is that you need to get some place. That's a far distance and you're not really in a hurry to get there. You have some time, you can, you know, take 15 hours to get there because that's about how much, how long it takes on a Chinatown go-to bus. But every time, most times when I take it, they do arrive ahead of schedule. So I think they allow um, a chunk of time in which to get there. So just in case they do get there, arrive early, then, you know, you're gonna be happy. <laughs> but, um, so this time I made my, my reservation and um, and according to the reservation I was going to leave from the departure site was going to be on Shallowford Road in Shambly. I did that about two weeks before I was scheduled to leave on December 30th. The morning of December 30th I got an email from the Chinatown go-to bus saying that my departure location had been changed and I'm like oh no because whenever I have a departure site I always make sure I go to the site before the day of departure so that I'll know where to go and I won't be running around at the last minute getting lost on Buford Highway or Indicator or wherever the, the um, location just happens to be so it was 10 o'clock in the morning when I when I saw that message and I said, okay, I have enough time to get on MARTA. Yes, you all know that MARTA is my primary source of, of transportation. Just like the Chinatown go-to bus is my primary source of transportation to get to and from Atlanta and New York. So I got on the bus. I found out which bus went down Covington Highway, which was the 115. And it's easy. it was easy to get to the 115 because I just picked it up at... Um, it didn't Creek station and the bus stop was right the bus stop for Marta was right where the bus stopped so I didn't have any any trouble finding it so that meant that when I had to come back later that day I would know exactly where to go so I later that day I did return at six o'clock mind you my bus isn't scheduled to leave until 8 30 but i know one good thing about chinatown bus is that if you get there early and your departure is scheduled for 8 30 and it's a seven o'clock bus they'll let you leave on the early bus they always ask you if you want to go early and of course i'll go early so i get there it's six o'clock the bus is there the drive is there there are a few people on the bus and she's scheduled to leave at seven o'clock but she doesn't leave at 7 o'clock. She didn't leave until 7.45. And while we waited, I chatted her up. And we talked about different things. What it was like being a, a driver for the go-to bus. And she's a contract bus driver. So she has a, she had a bus. She has a bus company. Jehovah Jireh is the name of her bus company. And so she's contracted out by the Chinatown go-to bus to, to drive that route from Atlanta to, to New York City. Chinatown. 
when by the time she leaves, it's 7.45. Well, at that point, I may as well wait for my regularly scheduled bus because she didn't really leave early. She left at 7.45. Now, one downside to the Chinatown bus is that that bus left Atlanta, but once she left Atlanta, people are still going to the Chinatown go-to site to book a seat on her bus. So we drive and drive and drive for two hours, three hours, and we made a stop. And when we made that stop, that was when she found out that there was like 30 people at, in Charlotte waiting to get on her bus. So we get to Charlotte, we get to Charlotte at midnight. Midnight, December 30th, so it's going into December 31st. So I was thinking, oh, it's almost midnight. I should call my sister and wish her a happy birthday. But when we got to Charlotte, I thought we had rolled up onto a Black Lives Matter protest. It was just it was crazy, it was insane, there was a mob of people trying to get on the bus, pushing and shoving and yelling, and people using their kids as weapons to get on the bus. The driver was yelling, and, and, and then she started saying, hey, if y'all don't back up so I can open this door, she meant the under part of the bus so people could put their luggage. She said, I'm gonna close the door and drive off. Well, that just sent them into a tailspin and it was about to be hell up in Harlem. I'm looking out the window. I was surprised they didn't start rocking the bus. They were they were enraged. It was I'm just glad I got out of it and I was praying the whole time. I was like, Lord, please don't let these people go ballistic at this bus stop. She managed to calm them down. She only had 17 seats and she, she said it loudly and clearly. She said, I have 17 seats and none of the seats are together. There are people with kids, there are couples and what have you. But somehow she managed to get everybody simmered down and we, we got on the bus and, and we headed on up to Virginia because that was her, her drop off point where we were going to get another bus driver. So. We get to Virginia and we change bus drivers. And the woman who got on the bus and sat next to me in Charlotte was really, really a nuisance. She kept complaining and complaining and complaining. She complained the whole time. At one point, I just I just ceased to listen to her. I put my earplugs in, my toe separators that I use for earplugs, and I just turned my head to the window because I didn't want to be bothered. She was complaining about everything. But in my mind, I'm thinking, if you so great, what are you doing take, taking the Chinatown go to bus to get to New York City? Of course, a plane, a plane ticket at that point was too costly and you know people trying to save money so it's a Chinatown go-to bus so we made it to New York and I was happy that we made it to New York we made it there in one piece but there's certain things about the Chinatown go-to bus that people need to be made aware of before you even get on the bus I don't care if you go online and buy a ticket and you choose a seat or wherever you get your seat I don't know Sometimes people, when they get to the, the, the site on Canal Street, then they'll, they'll, you know, get an assigned seat. But on the way back from New York City, there was a couple. <laughs> now, I'm coming back on Sunday night, Sunday night, uh, January 1st. So, it doesn't even matter what day or night of the week or month it is when it comes to China, when it comes to Chinatown to go to bus because they... It's the same scene every time. So you get to the Chinatown go to bus, they give you a seat number, but nobody, how should I say, the drivers do not, um, they do not encourage people to get in their, sit in their assigned seats. So they always tell everybody, even in Atlanta, when I got on that lady's bus, she said, sit wherever you want except the first two hours. Of course, I got there early because I wanted to sit in the first hour, but I couldn't get it. So I found the seat. I got the second hour, so I was pretty close to the front of the door. So on the way back from New York City, this couple gets on the bus, and they're like a beautiful, beautiful couple. They're young and 
they have to sit together. <laughs> The guy is standing there, and he's he's going, but but you don't understand. And I can see the panic in his face. He's like, you don't understand. We have to sit together. I said, okay, you have to sit together. I said, but what you need to do? And somebody was in their seat. Somebody was in their seat. Somebody got on the bus, and because the drivers don't don't emphasize sit in your assigned seat, whoever got to the seat first, they sat in the seat. The lady who who was occupying this seat. I don't know. I don't know her. I didn't know her. But she got up. But the thing that happens when people start to insist on their assigned seats is that now if she has to get up, that means that who's ever sitting in her seat has to get up. And so they started the process because they had to sit together. They started the process and that lady got up and I guess she got her seat. And I was like, okay. I said, what should happen is the bus driver should come and say to you all, everybody sitting there assigned seat. That means everybody would have had to get up and, and try to rearrange themselves to get their seat. So they don't insist that you sit in your assigned seat. But this couple got their seat. The, the young lady got up and went into the back bathroom and changed her clothes like she was riding on a luxury bus in Monterey, Mexico. I'm like, where does she think she's going? I'm like, she's going to lounge on a Chinatown go-to bus? But apparently, that's what they did. They was lounging and so in love. So, while we sitting there, somebody comes whose seat I'm occupying. And I said, look, I'm not getting up. I said, if you want me to move, go and get the bus driver so that he can get the person who's in my seat out and I'll be happy to give you your seat. But the lady, she, you know, she kind of fussed a little bit, but she could tell I wasn't moving. I wasn't moving. I said, because I know they do not stress sitting in your assigned seat. So I'm not getting up because you want to sit in your assigned seat. I'm not doing it. So we managed to make it to, to you know, back to Atlanta. But the road, the trip back was rough. There was a young man sitting next to me. The seats were really close together. The seat in front of me was pressed up to my knees the whole time, the, all the way back. 13 hours, 14 hours, I mean, ever many hours away. The young boy sitting next to me, and he was a boy. He was like 16, 17, so he's grown. He was lanky. His elbow was in my side the whole trip. I was plastered so close to the window. If I was any closer to the window, I would have been on the other side of the glass. I was trying to give him as much space as I could. I had my coat there. I had my pillow there so I could lay my head like that. It was a very uncomfortable uh, trip back. But I know how to rough it, so I just dug in and I dealt with it. But the Chinatown go-to bus is very, very shaky at best. And if you decide you're going to take a Chinatown go-to bus, you better be up for an adventure because it's coming. There's no point in getting on the bus, being mad. The, the drivers, if they're, they're Asian, they barely speak English. And I had two, two American drivers on the way up to New York. But most of the times, it's an Asian driver. They don't speak a lot of English. And, and all they know is they want to get your e-ticket thing that you printed out from your website. That's all they want. Everything else is up to the passengers. But it's convenient. It's convenient. And like I said, it works if you're not in a hurry and you need to go cheap. <laughs> That's really the, uh, the whole, um, the main idea behind the uh, Chinatown go-to buses. The Chinatown go-to buses predate Megabus. And of course, Greyhound had been around forever, but we all know Greyhound has been struggling and struggling, and they make a stop in every little crook town, every little, every little turn in the road. It takes forever to get anywhere on Greyhound bus. I have never taken a Greyhound bus, never. And I, I used to think that they cost too much, and that was my main reason for not taking a Greyhound bus, plus the fact that they make a billion stops. So, um, and then what I also learned online was that Bolt, B-O-L-T, the Bolt bus line is a subsidiary, a subsidiary of Greyhound bus created to compete with Megabus. Yep. <laughs> so I thought 
thought that was fascinating. But the uh, Chinatown go-to bus have been around for a long time and they really know how to move people around, but they have been under a lot of scrutiny. They have been charged with drug running, guns running, all type of things. The, the, the Chinatown gangs have gotten into fights over routes and, and people have died behind Chinatown go-to buses. It's true, it's true. Um, yeah, it's on Wikipedia, but you know what? I'm sure some things on Wikipedia is true, but if you don't want to trust Wikipedia, then do some more research, but I'm sure what they're saying about the Chinatown go-to bus is the truth. So I'm not going to keep this going any longer. Uh, one of the reasons I'm doing this is because I, I, I made a, a point of posting that I was going to put my Chinatown go-to bus experience <laughs> on my facebook page and i'm trying to get this up and running so let me know what you think if you have any additional questions please let me know and i will try my best to answer it because i know i can't answer everything in one city so thank you for watching the ruthie world one woman show see you next time bye